here's my preview of the Baylor versus Arizona women's basketball game. It's number 18 versus number 20. Baylor's number 18. Arizona's number 20. Arizona's A1 with our only losses to Kansas and Tucson, Arizona by 27 points, 77 to 50. But they have also played three winning record teams, but nothing like top 25 teams ranked so far this year. If you want to include Kansas, that's now ranked, fine. But Baylor's faced three of those ranked teams this year, while they also have faced six winning record teams out of those nine. So now I'm going to di dive deep into what Arizona is in terms of stats. And some of these players you might recognize, Baylor fans, because they were in the Big 12, or even you played against them last year. First of all, Shanae Pellington is number one, the leading scorer, five, five foot eight inch guard, that's a senior, 13.6 points per game, 0 for six on threes, 21 for 38 on free throws, three rebounds per game, 2.9 assists per game, 1.9 turnovers per game, 1.9 steals per game, 0.6 blocks per game, and 2.4 fouls per game. She was at Oklahoma for the first two years, and then she transferred over to Arizona. She's using her fifth and final year of eligibility. Jay Lavelle, number 30, 5'11 inch guard slash forward. That's a senior, 13 points per game, 24-42 on threes, 9 for 17 on free throws, 1.2 turnovers per game, 0.6 steals per game, 2 fouls per game. She was at Arizona State last year when we played them. So, Esmeri Martinez, number 12, 6 for 2 inch forward. That's a senior. 12.4 points per game, 7 for 15 on threes, 23 for 31 on free throws, 9.3 rebounds per game, 2.2 assists per game, 1 turnover per game, 1.9 steals per game, 1 block per game, 2.3 fouls per game. She was at West Virginia last year. Got to keep that in mind. Kate Reese is number 25, 6 for 2 inch forward. That's a senior. 12.1 points per game, 3 for 9 on threes, 24 for 31 on free throws, 6.6 .6 rebounds per game, 1.4 turnovers per game, 0.9 steals per game, 1.6 fouls per game. Kaylin Gilbert, number 15, 5 foot 8 inch guard. That's a freshman. 8.9 points per game, 7 for 20 on threes, 15 for 19 on free throws. 2.6 rebounds per game, 1.8 turnovers per game, 1.3 steals per game, 2 fouls per game. Maya Naji, double N, A, J, I, number 34, 6 for 4 inch forward, that's a freshman, 7.4 points per game, 1 for 1 in threes, 16 for 25 on free throws, 4.5 rebounds per game, 1.4 turnovers per game, 0.9 steals per game, 0.6 blocks per game, 2 fouls per game. Helena Quayo, Number 13, 6 foot guard, that's a senior, 6.7 points per game, 6 for 14 on threes, 4 for 5 on free throws, 2.8 rebounds per game, 3.1 assists per game, 1.4 turnovers per game, 2.6 steals per game, 0.7 blocks per game, and 1.7 fouls per game. Lauren Fields, number 23, 5 foot 9 inch guard, that's a senior, 6.2 points per game, 7 for 25 on threes, 16 for 26 on free throws. 2.4 rebounds per game, 2.4 assists per game, 1.3 turns per game, 2 steals per game, and 1.6 fouls per game. She was the leading scorer at Oklahoma State last year before the coaching change, so she transferred to Arizona. Mastin Carner, number twenty, I mean, number 4, 5 foot 11 inch guard, that's a sophomore, 4.4 points per game, 8 for 24 on threes, 4 for 5 on free throws, 0.7 turnovers per game, 0.7 steals per game, and 1.6 fouls per game. Paris Clark, number 22, 5'8 inch guard, that's a freshman, 2.2 points per game, 1 for 5 on threes, 2 for 3 on free throws, 2.7 rebounds per game, 1.2 steals per game, and 1.5 fouls per game. Lamaya Hilton, number 10, 5'11 inch guard, that's a freshman, 2.1 points per game, 0 for 1 on threes, 1 for 2 on free throws, 1.4 turnovers per game, 0.9 steals per game, and 1.4 fouls per game. Granted, I didn't include some stats that are like 0.5 or less because it's just like, there's no point. But I tell you something. They are a physical, uh, they, they will press you. They're like kind of like Tennessee State, but better in terms of their defense, of course. And to describe their defense, 
it is very, very similar to Texas. They will go man to man, 94 feet with pressure. But I will say this. Arizona, as you could tell by those no they have not played a lot of close games this year. I mean, their best opponent, they got blown out in the loss. New Mexico was tight for a little bit, but they won by 17. I mean, everything else, no. At least Baylor has been in, in closer games. I mean, an SMU team that's now 8-2, for starters, the Maryland game, the Villanova game, in the Michigan game. That is an advantage. And the good news is that that was all without Asia Blackwell. Now she's back, which is good for Baylor because she was the leading scorer at the, when, whenever she got hurt. Of course, you include that game she got hurt in, she went down to 14 points per game. You know, you know what I'm saying, though. She make, makes an impact, and she only played less than nine, nine to ten minutes. The goal for Asia last game against Tennessee State was ten to twelve minutes. They decided to just go consecutive so that she doesn't get cold or anything. And her knee's fine, according to Nikki Collin. A few after a year, I mean, a few hours after the game at the coaches' show last night. So, the plan is to play her 20-ish minutes. And hopefully, and of course, they're going to try to take their time with it. Because the last, you can't trade knee injuries very lightly. It's not easy to come back from knee injuries. And that, that's a positive news that she's back. Kendra Gillespie didn't play, but I know it's a day-to-day -day thing. No need to worry it, with that boot, I mean, a foot. But here's the deal. If, even if she can't play in this game, it's okay. Because on Kendra Gillespie, sure, you like to have a little more depth. But the thing is, it's important to get her ready for conference play at this point. I mean, you don't want to rush back somebody. But it's going to be a battle. But I know how to beat Arizona. I'm going to start with the defense. You've got to make get on those shooters as much as possible. And don't. Shanae Pellington, she's not a shooter. You just got to contain her driving the ball. So that's. Easier said than done, of course. You gotta stop her driving, and of course, take away their go. I mean, take away their best move. I mean, like which direction they move the best. You gotta take that away as much as you can. Of course, limit the foul trouble on both ends of the floor. You got to rebound in this game. The games that they have lost, Baylor's lost this year. It's because of two things: foul trouble. And rebounds. That's the biggest two reasons. Besides that Michigan game where they turned the ball over too much and got pounded on the glass. You got to limit your second chance, limit Arizona's second chance points as much as you can. I mean, don't let them get to the foul line either. So don't allow them to live at the free throw line with almost every foul. Except the offensive foul. First of all, you got to make them uncomfortable. I mean, make them shoot fadeaway jump shots. I mean, if they make it, they make it. But you just got to get on them. And don't allow them to get easy, clean looks. They're similar to Texas. I mean, I'm going to, once I get to the offense, I'll explain something later about Arizona's defense. You got to limit the fast break points as much as you can. Of course, you want to win the points in a pain battle, so limit those as much as you can. Now, offensively, Arizona is, like, like I said, 
like a full court pressure team, similar to Tennessee State in a way, but better. But they're also similar to Texas, except the on ball screen coverage. And granted, I know Jan Van Guyen be played against Arizona, but that's a different Arizona team now back then, even last year, and the year before, than now. It is different because the personnel is different. You got to execute your plays. You got to take care of the ball a lot better than you did in that last game. And hopefully, that was, that is going to be a, Address, which I know what it has been based on what Nikki Collins said. They looked at the film already. I mean, that's the thing. You got to make your threes count. You got to make free throws, which you did a good job last game. I mean, 76.5%. You got to make your free throws. You got to execute your plays, of course. And you got to limit your foul trouble, like, like AKA illegal screens. Offensive fouls. You got play in control. Don't feel rushed. You got to make your mid-range jump shots, too. Like, if Dariana could play like that, I know that competition is not as good compared to Arizona, but it would be huge if she would step up. Of course, Kalen Fickle needs to step up immensely. I mean, the two games that Baylor's lost, she's fouled out in. You can't have that. Ha she knows she can't ha have that ag again. She knows. She knows that. That's what she said. I, I believe in a press conference before or even an article or something. She knows she can't do that again. I mean, you got to get some rebounds. You got to get some second chance points. Points out turnovers as well. It's like some points in the paint. If if it's like good situation, I mean, aka pump fake drive, nobody's gonna help. You know, you gotta have good passing in this game, crisp. Especially when against a a team that's gonna press you. Kind of similar to Texas in a way, similar. I will also say you got to play good team defense on the other end of the floor. You can't take too many. Yes, you like to get steals, but if you don't get them, you're going to leave your your player, I mean, the player you're guarding, to have an opportunity to score without anybody near. And Tennessee State didn't do that in this past game, as well as the points off turnovers. They only have four points off turnovers out of 19 turnovers committed by Baylor in that game. So, that's just a... You got to take care of the ball, because I know they didn't convert that much, which was the big difference. Well, we did. But the thing is, you got to take care of the ball a lot better. And I know they're going to do that. And Baylor scoring outlook, when you look at the stats, I mean, it's pretty impressive. I mean, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players above 10 points per game right there. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Granted, I know Jana Van Gein beats 3.8. I don't expect Kendra to play, but you never know. 4.6 points per game. So, yeah, of course, you want to get, don't have three seconds in the lane so much, too. I mean, I know it doesn't hardly get called, but you never know. That's a turnover, too. So, and most of those turnovers Baylor had last game against Tennessee State were more like dead ball turnovers, like an illegal screen or pass out of bounds. And I know some of those turnovers that Tennessee State committed were clearly self-inflicted on their part and not what we did some. So, yeah. 
And hopefully Jaden Owens has a bounce back game after that last one. Because it would be huge to have another see, uh, like an upperclassman step up in this game. Of course, Caitlin knows in that last loss that you can't like I know it was a bad call on the offensive foul against Michigan, but don't get a tech right afterwards and that was your fifth and you had to sit. You don't want to do that. And I expect Jane Owens to play better next game. I mean, and I'm Kaylin Bickle need, definitely needs to work on the turnover. She had four last game, which I think that's going to be corrected because this is a good I know this was a blowout game against Tennessee State and everything, but this is a good game to kind of get ready for Arizona in a way because of the pressure. And you could look at film, it's kind of similar. You got to make good decisions as well. So that's just explaining this game in its entirety. It's at 6.30 p.m. Central Time or later, depending on the Texas men's and women's basketball game before games before this in Dallas. And if you're available to go, please go. I mean, the fan, you need to bring good fan support, Baylor Nation, if you can. I know I personally can't be there because I got family obligations. But, look, that's an exception because... I mean, it's the holidays we're talking about here. But if you're available to go, or if you can go, please go. Because the team needs you for this game, as well as the men's game. So, and I'm going to leave the stats in the description below, so y'all could see it as well. This is going to be, this is an important game for Baylor here, and for both teams in that matter. Not just for Baylor, but Arizona. Arizona's not faced a ranked team all year. Baylor's one and two against ranked opponents. They need another win against a ranked opponent. So, and the good news is, last game, too, for ba Baylor played Kalen Bickle and Asia Blackwell at the same time. For the first time all year. So, that's going to be helpful going forward. Anyways... If you like this content, hit the like and subscribe button. I see you guys later. It's going to be 400. Uh, now we're on a road of 500 subscribers now. Let's go. Or more. Of course, go down the line to 1,000 eventually. But first, let's get to 500.